So creating my characters is my passion. It's something I've done for years with great love behind every character I create. It's why I ended up having filled almost all of my MMO character slots with alts for roleplay. In fact, most of my project is because though I have little time to invest in gaming anymore to get interactions with other people, it's to get my creative juices out on characters and stories out there. It's kind of my jam. While I am an animation major, my art school threw a good chunk of other lessons in the creative industry just in case we might find ourselves filling in positions outside of our degree and that happens significantly more often than you think. I had some decent experience with creating characters, a good amount of training, and um, right now I'm on my own in my own project doing everything so this process I'm going to show is going to be full of shortcuts and might be a little sloppy but when you're the only person who's working off these sheets it doesn't matter too much actually. Sheets are good for consistency and planning regardless so they're still worthwhile to make. So that's going to be the process I'm going to talk about here. Now, like all my stuff, this is my process and is no way 100% the answer because creativity has guidelines but no solid methodology. It's a always changing industry. So let's get to it. The first thing I do is get inspired, get inspirations, get ideas, get references. There's no shame so long as you get what you want done. That's, that's the truth of the matter. Even then, a, like a, a silly trick I learned is just by a fun character meme from Tumblr, and it has been called the six character template. Simply put, pick six characters that inspire yours. And after running that through one of my characters and then trying to apply it in my future work, it ended up being a very useful tool. So this character I have in mind is going to be a sort of positive figure for my main character. He's almost both a minor rival and also a mentor-like figure and a brother that Jared never had. Also, I like anime, so don't judge me on this one. He's based a little off of an old roleplay character I had, so I didn't need to fill in too much. But I dropped in a few inspirations that I had in mind for the changes of what he would be. So three characters in, and I felt like it was enough to stop. But... Immediately, there's something you could already use to help with the character design. And between the three characters that I've chosen, there's a consistent color scheme between them. And it's a lot of yellows and reds and bright colors, you know, passion and high energy, which is what I want this guy to be like. So that can help with future design choices. When it comes to color, color choice isn't a monolith and colors have many meanings. But when placed like correctly upon a character, you just get a feeling that it, it looks right, it fits. Color still gives us senses of emotion, and that emotion has variety depending on the use. And that's stuff I'll get later on. I'll get more into that later on. On to sketching now. So when it comes to collecting references in college, the, and even in my professional work, there's no shame in using whatever references you need. I've gotten sheets from clients ranging from using examples from Overwatch to characters from Dragon Ball. If it provides the right visual idea, just nab it, get it, use it. There's no point in wasting time trying to, like, create something when it's something that is it is, like, right in front of your face. Just use it. For me, armor is a new territory. I haven't done armor up until this project, pretty much. And even though I've played fantasy games, had fantasy characters, I kind of just relied on default armor, game armor, nothing too exciting. So um, I mean that's a decent basis for me to start off with, but I, I did some studying to learn the actual parts and how to make armor that isn't outright fantasy, but not outright normal armor, because when you look at normal armor that stuff is, <laughs> is not going to translate well. So I do have a friend who does armor hobbies in real life and he's given me plenty of advice from 
content to use. He gave me a big drive of what armor he looks at. He recommended from software games and also recommended uh, armor from real life, historical armor, because there's still nice pieces of historical armor in existence. And after picking up tons of these references, I eventually settled with what I'm working on right now. Set with this. It's simply a chest plate upon chainmail because um, his name's Tobias here, and he's more of a flexible fighter, so he could do with less bulky armor, but he needs just enough plate armor to remain looking like a knight. As you can see, I'm polishing his silhouette a bit right now. Silhouette and character composition helps readable diversity. It can be extremely dramatic or just enough variation, but it's generally good to be able to identify a character one from the other. Sometimes people also add doodles of these silhouettes in action, but I skip that step because I don't want to spend more time than I need to, and it's generally unnecessary for my process. So next is just getting enough of the face designed. I'm slowly, personally pushing my face styles to a little bit more extremes of facial diversity. Like, D Tobias here was meant not to be a super handsome guy in juxtaposition to his brother, but he's still meant to give off nice vibes, so that led to avoiding more heavy angles and that helps bring out some of the youth and gives him still a softer and approachable look. Yeah, to be honest, I don't need to go far into this one. The facial rigging I'm going to be using is pretty universal across the characters. So, I mean, it's actually good just to go briefly to develop his personality a bit more within his face and to see if I just need to emphasize certain wrinkles or traits of his face when I start sculpting. So, on to the coloring. I mentioned before that colors bring in emotions and how diverse they can be. For example, use of yellow can be both bright and happy, but it could also cause unease and caution. I generally go with three identifiable colors to put onto a character, and that's what's normally recommended. I try to keep the color combinations as unique as possible. Um, variations I do will involve hue, saturation, lightness, and um, warmer colors, they tend to have higher energy. Cooler is obviously more chill. Then you have principles that green is an oddball of a color and it has a lean towards neither cool or warm. So these are things you should keep in mind when picking colors for your characters. You could do a bit of a dive into color psychology to find out what colors evoke what certain ideas and emotions. Above all else, um, do what to an extent do what you think feels right a lot of people just plead complimentary colors are nice that's true but if you always rely on just this one or two methods of picking colors it could lead to monotonous designs like if you always pair blue with orange just because they're complementary colors it's going to be noticeable and it's going to kind of kill variation if that's your goal so for this character, he's meant to be someone that the main character could aspire to be like. He's almost like a hero figure. So I went with, there's a cliche com heroic combo of blue, red, and gold. You can see that on many characters, Superman, Mario, Sailor Moon. So um, red was a change I added post of this recording. It used to be white, but then I, I felt like that was still a little plain and he matched another character's colors a little bit too much. So throwing red on there spoke a lot to his character. So um, blue and gold are the colors of the kingdom that he's a part of and generally it represents the demeanor of many of the knights from there, which is strong, dependable, confident, sincere, stable, enthusiastic, and optimistic. Um, the red on his cloak I put on there because it helps divide him from the others as it is not uniform standard pretty much. It kind of gives Tobias more of a feeling of energy and passion that his fellow knights do not have that level and it's what makes him unique from the other ones. 
um, for a time I did feel like it was taboo to put all three primary colors, you know, red, blue, and yellow onto a character. But then after doing more research and feeling more comfortable with it, I felt like as long as it had a purposeful meaning behind it, I was able to do it. For me modeling, I don't really need a side view. A front and back is fine for me. There's a quick trick I do to save time and that's simply flipping a copy of the front backwards and then erasing the detail and redrawing the inside to show how it would look on the outside. It just saves time and keeps silhouette consistent. Maybe it's a trick you could probably use, but the goal is just to design the back as fast as possible. So then I have enough to work off of to start my modeling process. And just the good thing about being both the designer and the modeler is that any changes I feel would be right can be done in whatever step and it will not be an issue. I use Blender for almost all of my 3D work. I've sped up my modeling process by having character bases already created so I can just import those and sculpt them to match the character. To an extent, sometimes I just copy, let's say, Jared's character and I just work off of that and sculpt it up to be a different character. It's a trick to save time. And so as a cinematic character, I'm not worrying too much about the count of polygons since my system is decent enough. And um, as long as I'm not hitting 500, I don't think there's a need for it. The general rule, it's, it's a lot different than game design. So when you're doing cinematic, it could support as much as you could render. So the better the system, the better quality you can output. And um, the first thing I do is after modeling, I texture my character by putting, it's like a, a color ramp on it and mixing it around with the lighting. And then I bake those onto the model to get the base colors in. And with those base colors in, I have something to work off of in Substance Painter. Like it already gives me a good color palette. I do also include baking normal maps for most of this because it helps also painting and substance painter. But and at the end of the model, I don't use all of them because um, sometimes the light hits funny and sometimes it also still kills the style of what I'm aiming for. I'm a bit of a mixture of organizational and messy, let's just say. I prefer to have many texture maps for the sake of ease and substance painter and I feel like it adds a lot more control and gives me a lot more room to add detail. A painterly style is my goal for my project so I just paint away applying digital painting principles onto 3D and especially on the focus on the skin and the face which is going to be where most of the camera focus is is going to be what shows emotion and the detail and I further texture paint in Photoshop since the brushes there have a lot more control than Substance Painter and um, you know I, I prefer painting in Photoshop in general as well after a few rounds of back and forth between Blender, Substance Painter, and Photoshop I have finished my, my boy here, Tobias Rathwald it's a process I hope to refine in the future. There's always room for improvement. If you enjoyed this video and are curious about my adventure into 3D, drop a like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.